As a CFI, I've logged thousands of hours just on instruction with students in the pattern working on landings, and there are two main reasons pilots struggle with them. The first is improper use of the rudder to control the nose, and the second, which we'll talk about here, is failure to control airspeed. This is Dan from Flight Insight letting all our pilots know that our Black Friday sales start today. Head to our website linked here and below and save 20% on everything, including our all-access bundle, which saves you over $1,500. Sales last through December 2nd. In our full Flight Insight landing course, we talk about the law of the roller coaster, which is a way to visualize different types of energy. For example, if you're high and fast on an approach, you have too much energy. You can either lose a lot of altitude and pick up speed, or lose a lot of airspeed and maintain altitude. Energy management is about controlling airspeed. So before you do anything to manage a landing approach, I want you to be focused on airspeed. A lot of instructors focus their students on maintaining a specific airspeed on the downwind and base legs. And while this is a good tactic for getting in the habit of slowing down, it's not vital to hit these speeds at the expense of a good approach. What's really important is that you get to your target speed on final approach. In the 172, I like to use 60 knots. Many people will use different speeds, and it's also dependent on winds, runway length, aircraft weight, etc. But whatever you're using, I want you to get established on that speed as soon as possible once you're on final. Here we're on the landing approach, and we see that we're a bit fast, 70 knots. We also see white over white lights on the VASI, meaning we're too high. Fight the urge to correct this by pitching down. Job one is getting on airspeed. Let's reduce power and hold the nose up to slow down to 60 knots. It'll seem extreme to apply back pressure when we're already too high, and of course it'll have the immediate effect of getting us even higher on the glide slope, but trust the airspeed. The reason I like 60 knots is because we're just barely on the back side of the power curve called the region of reversed command. What this means is that as we slow down, we actually experience an increase in the power required to maintain thrust and lift. This allows us to shed excess energy better than if we were faster and in the region of normal command. So you can think of this approach speed like being on an express elevator that allows you to descend to your proper glide slope without having to dive and pick up speed. Be patient and gauge how much you're descending into the glide slope. If you want, you can employ a forward slip to land or an S turn to lose more altitude, but doing it this way keeps us on a stabilized approach. We actually end up losing more altitude than necessary to make our aiming point between the VASI lights, and by the time we approach the runway, we adjust our viewpoint from that point to further down the runway so we can engage our peripheral vision and start holding the aircraft off the ground. Because of our airspeed control, we don't really float too much down the runway, which helps us make a precise touchdown. So on your next pattern work session, try to think of getting on your airspeed on final as job one. Once you have that, trust it, and use power to manage the glide slope, and you should find yourself with much more stable approaches, making the job that much easier. If this is helpful, please have a look at our full online ground schools today at the link here or in the description.